Hello, Hair Tools users! Welcome to Episode 3 of my Blender Hair Tools tutorial series. Today, I'll walk you through the process of creating a simple, game-ready hairstyle using one of the default hair grids that come with the Hair Tools add-on. Creating hair using this method is super fast, and anyone with basic Blender knowledge should have no problems making a hairstyle. If you watched the first two episodes, then you can use the scalp and the hair textures you created. Alright, so with step one, we're going to go ahead and import our head or avatar into Blender. Having a scalp is personal preference. If you haven't watched episode one yet, and you want to learn how to create a custom scalp with texture, please go back and watch that episode first. Depending on the size of your mesh, you may need to scale it up or down in order for the hair tools embedded grids to be around the same size when you append. Once you're ready to append the grid, go to the Hair Tools pane, go down to Library, find the hairstyle you would like to customize, click on it, and then click Append. Before clicking off of it, right-click anywhere to go to Move to Collection, New Collection, and name it Appended Grid. Remove the curves, as we will only be using the grid. Now, go into Side View and move and scale the grid so it lines up with your head. And now I'm going to turn on Proportional Editing. Now I'm just going to move the vertices around until they get closer to the scalp. You can adjust the proportional editing strength by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. I want to do as little editing to the curves as possible, so I'm going to edit the grid a bit more. I don't want the curves to intersect with the body, so I'm going to move this part of the grid back. Here I go into x-ray mode so I can see my vertices that are hidden under my mesh. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this part forward so it's not intersecting. Right here, I'm going to select edge loops and do an edge split. So now I can move these vertices back. Make sure your proportional editing is set to connected only. Once you're satisfied with your grid, you can now generate your curves. In the Hair Tool pane, go to the Hair Operators. Now, click on Curves from Grid Surface. We can make adjustments over here. If this disappears at any time, you can get it back by hitting Ctrl Shift H, Curves from Grid Surface. You can adjust your strand count points per strand, this is basically like um, subdividing. The higher the number, the higher poly your hair is going to be. The lower the number, the lower poly. Offset to tip and offset to root. So what this means is if you choose offset to tip, more vertices are going to be towards the tip of the hair, giving it more subdivisions in that area. If uh, you use offset to root, you're going to get more subdivisions in the root. Sometimes that's actually extremely helpful. When it comes to the next settings, clumps, randomized spacing, randomized length, and contrast, and offset, and the noise settings, noise amplitude, I actually don't use these settings, so I'm not going to go over them in this tutorial. I normally set my snap amount to 1.00%, to offset zero. We want to make sure that ge generate ribbons is true. When it comes to your strand width, this is really going to depend on how big your mesh is. The bigger the mesh, 
the larger the strand width will need to be. You can play with these settings until you get your desired result. I'm sticking with 0, 0.30, and make sure that Align Tilt is also true. Once you're satisfied with the settings, you can hide your grid, and now we can add our own hair textures by doing the following. In Object Mode, click on your hair layer. Now, go into the Shading section. Hit Tab to edit the hair perimeters. All right, we can delete the color ramp and comment box. Now, you're gonna drag in your custom hair diffuse and opacity map. On your diffuse texture, connect color to albedo. Connect UV to vector on both the diffuse and the opacity. On your opacity texture, connect the color to the alpha. If you're using a PNG diffuse that has an alpha channel, you'll connect the color to the albedo and the alpha to the alpha. Now we need to add our UVs. Go into the UV editor, drag in your opacity map. Click on the hair UV button. Press shift plus delete. Now you can outline your hair by starting at the left and working your way to the right. Be sure no strands go outside the UV box. Now you can assign the correct hair textures to this layer. These hair curves are going to be layer 0, the base and block out layer to hide the scalp. Now, with your hair curves selected, press Ctrl Shift H on your keyboard. Go to Set UV Region. Shift click on 0 and 0 mirrored. Now our base layer is complete. Before we move on, let's organize our content if you haven't already. Go over into the hierarchy and rename your curves if you wish. I like to rename my hair curves as I go so I don't get anything mixed up. One more thing before we move to the next step. Since we're making game ready hair, we want to make sure the poly count isn't too high. If poly count doesn't matter to you, then you can skip this step. In object mode, click on your base layer hair curves. Go to the hair tool pane. Under hair operators, click on adjust curve profile. Under the add profile settings, change the segment U to number 2. There's hardly any noticeable difference, but this greatly reduces the poly count. Now it's time to make layer 1, the breakup layer. In object mode, select your base layer 0 and press Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate. Go to the hair tool pane and under hair operators, click on uninstance profile. This is very important, so don't skip this step. Next, we're going to rename this layer to hair layer 1. Now, we're going to assign our layer 1 and 2 UVs to this hair layer. With hair layer 1 selected, press Ctrl Shift H on your keyboard and go to Set UV Region. Shift select 1, 2, then 1 mirrored, and then 2 mirrored. Now, I want to add some randomness to this layer. With your layer 1 selected, go into Edit Mode. Go to Select, Select Roots, Press Ctrl plus sign about three times. Go back to Select. Invert. Now, press F3 on your keyboard and type the word random. Click on Curve, Transform, Randomize. For the amount, we just want to use 0.1. Now we're going to create hair chunks so that every angle has volume. With your hair layer 1 selected in object mode, Go to the Hair Tool pane. Under Hair Operators, click on Edit Curve Profile. Go into X-Ray Mode. Press 7 on your numpad or the Z on your navigation gizmo for top-down view. Turn off Proportional Editing. Hover over the bevel curve and press L on your keyboard to select it. Press Shift-D to duplicate. Using the G key and rotate, move it over so it looks like this. Once again, select this curve and duplicate it, and move and rotate again so it looks like this. Now, with your lasso tool selected, highlight all the curves, and with your G key, move them so the cursor is right in the middle of them. Now go back to the hair tool pane and click on Close Curve Profile. Click back on your mesh, and click on the period key on your numpad to zoom in on it. Now, change your viewport shading to solid, and under the viewport shading options, set color to random. 
Now, with your hair layer 1 selected, go into edit mode. Now we need to move layer 1 away from layer 0 to stop the intersecting. Since layer 1 is a different color than layer 0, this will help us see the overlap. I first go into side view mode and go to select, tip. Make sure to turn on proportional editing with connect only as true. We want to deselect the front vertices by using our lasso select and holding control while we select them. Now, with the G key, and by adjusting the proportional editing strength using the scroll wheel, you can move the bottom part away from layer 0 like this. We don't want to move it too far away, just enough so that it's not intersecting. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the front part of the hair. Now, under Proportional Editing, let's uncheck Connect Only. I'm going to go up towards the top a bit and move the hair away slightly. Be careful not to move the roots too much, otherwise they will float above the head. Before we create our last layer, I like to taper the roots to help with the floating root effect. With your hair layer 1 still selected and in edit mode, go to Select, Roots. Now, press Alt-S and use proportional editing and the scroll wheel to adjust the strength so you only get the tips like this. Okay, now it's time to make your last layer. These will be the flyaway layers. In object mode, select layer 1 and press Shift D to duplicate it. Make sure you uninstance the profile. Now we are going to add some randomness again. In edit mode, select the roots. Press Ctrl plus sign about two times. Now go to Select, Invert, F3, to add some more randomness, set the amount to 0.2. Now we're going to move the vertices away from hair layer 1 just like we did before. Since we added a bit more randomness, some of the hairs may be intersecting more than others. We can turn connect only on under proportional editing and then move the strands away separately. You can turn proportional editing back on and make final adjustments later until you get the result you're looking for. I'm going to speed through this part. Just move the hair around until it's not intersecting with layer 1. I go back and forth between connected only, on and off. I also end up hiding sections of the hair to make it easier to see what I'm doing. To do that, just select the vertices you want to hide and press H. To unhide them, press Alt-H. You can spend as much time here as you want, just make sure you have as few intersections as possible. Now let's go back into shaded view. We still need to assign our UV. We also forgot to rename the layer. Let's do that now so we don't get mixed up. I'll name this Flyaways. Now in object mode, with the flyaway layer selected, press Ctrl Shift H and assign UV region. Let's pick 3 and 3 mirrored. Okay, it's looking pretty good. However, I can see the scalp a little bit, so I'm going to actually adjust the scalp UV to move it back just a little bit like this.
Okay, I think it's done. You can spend more time on it, of course. Let's go ahead and convert this to a mesh. Select all three of your curves and press Control shift h Then go to Finalize Hair. Now you can hide your curves. And that's it, game ready hair. You can export this mesh along with your scalp to a program of your choice. I'm gonna import mine over into Character Creator 3 to see how it looks. Okay, this is how it looks in Character Creator. Keep in mind, this is only the diffuse and opacity map. I did not add a normal map, roughness map, or ambient occlusion. Also, keep in mind we did not do a whole lot of manual work in Blender to get this result, and the hair textures I used were created very fast, and personally, were not my favorite. You can get a more polished look if you spend a little more time on the hair textures and place the hair in a more strategic fashion. Well, that is the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and please leave feedback. I'm not sure what my next episode will be. Maybe particle hair to curves? If you have any ideas, leave some comments. Till next time.